All right. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Really, really nice having you here. Um, I look forward to this conversation. I know it's going to be interesting. Um, but just starting, let's know your name, uh, where you're from, and where you're calling from. Um, I am Sena Dagadu. Um, I am Ghanaian Hungarian, born and raised in Ghana, but I live in Budapest. Uh, I'm well, technically now I am on the outskirts of Budapest in Budapest. Oh. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I've been living in Hungary now for just about over 18 years. And, uh, that's where I am right now on the veranda of my home. I'll not show you around because it's messy though. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, so one question that i've always yeah you are creative one of the things you do is music you write music yes. and you perform music yes. um how did you decide to use Sena dagadu at an early age instead of maybe another name how did you come to the conclusion that oh i would use my name um, well, actually, that's fine. It's a good question. Um, my full name is Veronica Sena Aku Dagadu. Yes. And when I moved to, like, growing up, everybody in Ghana from my childhood used to call me Veronica. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I moved to Hungary, that's where, like, I, I was attending this, like, uh, I don't even know what you call it, like a course, like a journalism course. And over there, a couple of my friends were like, ah, so you cry, you are here looking all exotic and your name is Veronica. Don't you have any other name? And I was like, yeah, my name is Senna. Like my dad calls me Senna and a couple of my teachers called me Senna. But yeah, but usually people call me Veronica. They're like, Senna, that's so cool. That's so cool. So they just started calling me Senna. So like all my, my friends at that time started calling me Senna. And I actually then just realized, yeah, they are right. Like it's such a... Like in the when you take me away from the Ghanaian context, where there there are plenty senas, it's not really a big deal. I never really yeah. thought about it much, and uh, but over here it puts you know it, it adds a little touch of like the exotic. So when I started making music, it was just self evident. Why would I look for another name? I don't know MC Flex or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a beautiful name with a beautiful meaning that actually. Yeah, like the whole, the, you know, Sena also means like um, uh, God gives or gifts from God. So, God. so the whole music making also kind of came like as a gift to me, mm. as a, you know, like an outlet in my life. Yeah. And it fits, it just fit really well. So I didn't, uh, I didn't really think too much about it. It just, it was the most natural option. Yeah, but still on the name, because it's something that I've thought about, right? Um, yeah. Because I feel like there's there is there is a strength in that. Like, how did you also decide not to use one name, Senna, which actually is strong? Why? Um, I, you... actually, I actually used Senna for a very long time. Okay. Uh, just Senna. Yeah. Because like the Dagadu was a bit overcomplicating it over here. Like people <laughs> not like say what and i'm like charlie you just call me senna so <laughs> so i used senna for a very long time and i did a lot of uh, like collaboration work and featurings and whatnot so everybody here in the area knows me as senna but when i started to focus more on my solo work like um you know releasing things on my own name and not yeah. as a featuring artist with a band or a group or or some other producer or or performer i thought it would be more prudent to use my full name because also there are different centers um in the world performing yeah. but there's the from what i know there's only one center that got to singer songwriter so yeah. so when i started to do my solo work um more you know, with my more adult head, I, I started to attach the Dagadu to kind of differentiate the project as well. Even up to today, like if I do a collaboration or something, I usually just use Senna. Okay. But when I'm releasing things on my own name, under my own label, I use Senna Dagadu to kind of differentiate the project as well. It's a bit of a, you know, schizophrenic um, yeah, yeah, effect yeah. at the end of the day. And I've had some issues with it, um, you know, like, um on like on spotify claiming music that is my own because i'm a different name da, 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 da. but i don't really care because at the end of the day 
it's all just music. It's all out there anyway. If somebody's going to find it, they're going to find it. And, and, um, and I like this kind of separation of my own project being under my full name and then featureings and other things being under just Senna. Yeah. I think it works. It, it, it does work because I've also used it when, when I was managing um, Billy and the Extreme Volume. That's how I created that, like Billy and the Extreme Volume. So two entities coming together to form a group. And then yeah. it means that the entity, Billy, on its own, can also do collaborative projects with other yeah, it kind of gives you a freedom to move yeah. around and yeah. instead of taking on a complete other pseudonym, like, yeah. you know, some other name completely, it's still me, it's still my name, yeah. it's just an yeah. abbreviated version. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's amazing. Um, I know that growing up in Ghana and West Africa, like, obviously, we're all exposed to music, different levels of creation. Yeah. But when did you discover music? Like... Not when, Andrew, no. When did you discover music say, I think I understand this thing? Um, I think I was somewhere in my early teenage years, like, like uh, maybe uh, around, uh, actually, I think a little bit early on, earlier on, maybe somewhere when I was like 10, 11, 12, when I was turning into an actual human being from, from yeah. a child. That's when um, I... I I, my constant partner started to become music. My dad used to travel a lot. And uh, one thing he always brought with him, he, he loved gadgets, electronic equipment. And he would travel to like Japan and stuff. So he'd come back with like mini disc players, uh, Walkman, you know, like a hi-fi system, those kind of things. And he would always bring lots of music as well. And my mom was also an avid collector of records from, from the time she moved to Ghana. She came with her, with her LPs and, and, you know, her phonogram records and whatnot. So we always listened to music. And like, as you said, Ghana, music is kind of, you know, inescapable. It's, it's all over the place. But um, it was when my dad brought some of these gadgets that were at home and we had a collection of music at home that I could freely go and touch and play whatever I wanted. And uh, I was turning into a teenager, you know, teenage stresses, you know, who am I, what am I, why am I, where am I, <laughs> questions. So I started just listening to all the, all the stuff that my parents had at the house and I found refuge in it. I listened to music all the time. Like from there on, like when I'm sleeping, I just put on a CD yeah. and fall asleep listening to an album and wake up and put music and and just i just found healing and companionship and and meaning to to some sometimes just defining my emotion like i wouldn't even know what is happening to me but a song would make me feel better you know so i think i was really i was really young like from the time i was 10 i started to listen to the stuff that was at home and by the time I was well into my teens, I like I had, I had quite developed taste in in what I liked and what I listened to. And thankfully, I had a lot of options because my parents really had quite a collection of music. Plus, older sister, older brother also bringing their, their own music and influence to the house, and everybody having a different taste. So, so really, I just listened to the whole spectrum of music. My brother used to listen to a lot of reggae music. So, so, you know, Peter Tosh, Jimmy Cliff, like all the classics. Uh, my sister was the one who was bringing the fresh vibes, like the dance hall, the hip hop, you know, the Snoop cassettes and, and Lady Saw and those kind of things that were really fresh at the time. Um, um, Shabba ranks, all those kind yeah. of things. Cause she was, you know, just older enough to get the fresh vibes. And then my parents, my dad was a soul guy. So he had, he did, where he's bringing music, he's bringing Barry White, Percy Sledge, he's bringing like the 60s, uh, 70s, yeah, soul singers, yeah. Marvin Gaye, all those vibes. And my mom, dear, she was a bit of a mix. Like she really loved classical music up to today, of course. So she had uh, plenty of classicals and, um, and also like contemporary music, like she, Tracy Chapman and Sting and all kinds of things. So me, I was just... And like at the lucky receiving and I was a last born. Yeah. So everybody was bringing their music to the house and me, I was the one who was there to play with it really. <laughs> so, so, so I started early and I, I found 
I found always music to be very comforting and very, you know, it explains things that you don't even know needed explaining. When you listen, yeah. to, a song, yeah, when you listen to a song and you just find, um, see somebody right here. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Fine. Oh, okay, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Curious little cat. Yeah, so I started quite early. Like, I, I think I started quite early. I, I was going to say, um, because definitely you're a mom, um, and also congratulations for the, for the, for the not-so-new baby. Um, <laughs> um, Thank you. I was, like, this, I would, the question I'm about to ask you, I would link it back to becoming a mother, right? But okay. you just see, as we become adults, right, and you look back into your childhood, you see how your childhood actually forms who you are. Like, yeah. you are such a versatile musician, right? Like, if people listen to your records, they could get confused, right? Because... They do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's like everything you just said, from soul to sometimes feeling like some kind of classical vibe, to reggae, to hip hop, like everything. And yeah. the, it, going back to the strength, right? In, in terms of how you pick your name, the decisions that you're making, that strength of, no, I'm going to be this versatile. Because a lot of musicians, a lot of creatives can't make that, that decision, you know, because. Yeah. It, yeah. Let me just interrupt. I've actually had a lot of issues with that uh, throughout like my professional career. I've been told numerous times by labels, by management and whatnot, I have to streamline in order to be able to be marketed properly. I will not be able to be classified properly and I will confuse my audience because they don't know exactly which genre I belong to and, and all these things. I've had that come at me constantly because every single album I've made has been so diverse and so, so strange. Nobody has ever been able to put a label on it to tell, myself included, what kind of genre it is. But you see, the thing is that me, I didn't start making music to fit into a box. I did it just as a form of self-expression to ease my own mind and to calm my own soul. And hopefully with that, reach other people who are probably having similar emotions they don't know how to express and and just find little niches to um, to give little pockets of you know expression and emotion so it it has been like every time that comes at me that you have to be able to tell there's a rooster in the neighbor you hear that thing yes, going, yes. I'm <laughs> like, find someday i'm, I'm telling you i'm thinking about that soon <laughs> anyway so like um I do get that a lot and I understand it completely. And, um, and they are right. If I want to be marketed properly and if I want to be, um, you know, if I want to reach a wider audience, I do have to be more specific and whatnot, but um, I can't compromise myself. This is what comes when I sit down to start making music. If I say now I'm going to start doing something in a very streamlined way so that I can reach this and this man, it just takes the vim out for me yeah. and I don't feel like yeah. doing it again. <laughs> so it's kind of like I have to, it's, it's, it's a, kind of like a sacrifice I make to have the freedom to make the music I want to not be that marketed or internationally pushed or whatever. And for me, it's, it's balanced. I don't really care too much about the fame and celebrity or the grandness of the scale on which I'm, I'm, I'm making my work to sacrifice the freedom of having uh, the choice to, to, to sing on whatever kind of music I want. It, it, when, I, when I sit down with creatives, I always tell them, like, focus on the creation. Like, focus on yeah. what is coming. And don't focus on how would I market this? How would I sell this? Because it that's, feels the vibe. It yeah, feels that's, the where, vibe. that's where a lot of people get trapped. And that's how you see when you sometimes you hear some collaboration, people are like, Charlie, what be this? Because people start making those decisions based on what can I push and what can I sell? Um, yeah, it's a valid thing. And everybody, 
I don't think there's an artist in the world who doesn't do those, uh, who doesn't create music or, or whatever art at, at, at some point specifically streamlined to fit into some kind of category. Yeah. You can't afford yeah. it. We all have to yeah. eat. We all have to work. Yeah. But, but also, I think on the grander scale of like, if you are looking at a lifetime of building your career, you cannot sacrifice your integrity and your, your vibe. You, you can't because you, you, lose your, you lose your vim very, very quickly. So, so looking at integrity, looking at vibe, um, and just looking at the decisions that you've made as, as a young person growing up in Ghana, um, having um, a black, a Ghanaian dad, and, and an Algerian mom, right? How did yeah. you come into that realization? How did you, what, what forced you to look back and say, oh, this is not just daddy and mommy, that is black and mommy's white? Did you, like, can you remember what triggered that in you? You know, for me, I think for a long time, I didn't think about this at all. Like it was not, like I didn't, it was so natural to me. Like I, it wasn't, I didn't even see it. You know what I mean? It was like, that's my dad and that's my mom yeah. and that's my cousin and that's my yeah. auntie and that's my, yeah. and that's my grandmother from this side. That's my grandfather yeah. from this side. And yeah, they look different, but I never really thought about it. Uh, you know, it's like skin color because it's so natural in our yeah. household to have all different shades and colors. And I think it was like in, in primary school, when I was well into like class four, class five, class six there, when you start, you know, your, your mates start talking and then, you know, you get the whole half cast, half cast, half cast, half cast, half cast, half cast. And then you realize, oh, so there's like one like me in my class. There's one other half cast girl in the other class. And we are a different species. Why are we a different species? What the hell? Like why, why me? I'm, you know, being pointed at like the half cast and having slightly different expectations from the teachers and different expectations from my mates as to how to behave, how intelligent to be, how to dress, how prosperous my family should be because there's a white person that, you know what I mean? Like you, yeah. those questions started to come already like in primary school where you have obviously competition from children from which color, which type of socks you are wearing to, you know, all, the, all those things. So that started to be a question to me, but I, I don't think I actually really understood it until I was like much older. It was something that you just kind of registered. Okay, so me too, I'm a different class of person. And, um, and then in my teenagers, I realized that because of that, like uncontrollably, a lot of my best friends were also mixed race like myself. Yeah. Because, because you... you you always gravitate to your kind yeah. or yeah. what do you call it? Undeniably, we were different. We are neither black, we are neither white. We are somewhere in between the free section. And, and so we kind of clanned together. So I always had really, I mean, I'm not saying like all of my friends will have cast. That's, uh, yeah, you know, that's no I sense. know, I know some of you, some people who will be your friends will be black. So <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I'm just, I'm just saying that you do like, you kind of gravitate towards that. And then, and um, anyway, let me try and find my thoughts. Like, uh, like yeah. So I, but I never really dove too deep into the question until until like well into my 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 later teenage years, and probably even I think more the realization came when I moved out of Ghana and I moved here to Hungary, yeah. where the coin turned the other side. Yeah. So in Ghana, I was one thing, and then I moved here, and I was like, you know, the black girl, the African yeah. girl, the descent. And I started thinking, like, okay, so it's is it such an issue that everywhere is is and it's so different, like yeah. on both sides, and and um, and that's when I started to you know look at my identity and my roots and my my mixedness and and start to to ask questions and start to kind of decipher so who am I and I think up to today it's a question that I always find I always find some somehow I have to return to it because it unfortunately up to today 2020 we are here especially now looking at the situation uh, popping off in America for example it's, it's the stupidest thing, if you ask me, that we are still so hung up about questions of race. Yeah. It should be the most banal 
thing that we don't even think about like my childhood it should be something that you don't like and so what you are black and what and so what like what's your point <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and i can't believe that it is such a pertinent issue up to today it should be it, sh it should not be it should not be a question and somehow i i here in making music in Hungary, which is obviously a predominantly Caucasian white, very, very white place, and coming from Ghana, which is a very, very black place, um, I find that here it's almost like my mission be some styles to, to, to kind of be an ambassador of blackness. You know what I mean? To represent uh, my Africanness, to, to, to kind of, yeah, just to be an ambassador here to educate, to show, and to just show people that I'm just a normal person yeah. who happens to be of African descent, who, who is here. So look, come closer. I'm not going to bite you. So generally, yeah, just to be an ambassador of, of Africanness over here. And consciously now, when I look at it, doing my work, going back to Ghana, yeah. I consciously have to be a mixed race ambassador. Like, you know, to show that, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I'm just like you, but I'm also not just like you, but we are all cool. So it's, it's, it's in my, like, adult years, in my 30s, actually, that I started realizing that I have to be actively representative of both races, depending on which country I'm in. But I, I, I like to think that I'm, it's, it's kind of my, my mission to be, like, the keeper of balance is to sh and to show both worlds that, you know, every, Everything is balanced. Yeah. It's, it's all good. It's, it's all good, whichever way you look at it. You know. I, I I can only I can only assume how sometimes that could be very very heavy, like just be tiring. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's exhausting. It yeah. shouldn't be an issue, but at the same time, because it is. I think, like I, I'm telling you, like it's in my 30s, in my 30s that I started to realize that this is is something that I have to do as a human yeah. being yeah. on this earth yeah. and mixed race with with the talents that I have or the the, the life that I'm living, the art that and my expression. This is what I have to do, and it, it took me a very long time. And throughout that long journey, I mean, plenty different, good and bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah things uh, affect that journey and, and oftentimes make you want to just be like, oh, fuck everything. And everybody yeah. just goes down. I'm going to sit in my house and drink coffee and I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, speaking to a friend uh, some days ago and she was just speaking about how racism is connected to patriarchy, you know, and just looking at it like sexism. At the end of the day, if patriarchy exists, if men in Ghana still are seen as the the way, the truth, and the light, or, or anywhere we find ourselves in the world. Racism, which is heavily um, led by white men, is still going to be like, so how do, we, how do we begin to break those barriers, like internally and outwardly? How do we begin to, like obviously, with someone like you now who has taken up that, that um, position and say, okay, I know, the responsibility that comes with what I do, and I would move to create balance. Like, how, what, what do we expect? Like, what kind of world do you think? Do you think that we can be void of this? I, I like to hope so. I don't know whether what I think is, is relevant, but I like to hope so. <laughs> yeah. um, um, really there are so many even right now i'm just kind of watching who is saying what with this whole situation going on and um is the little things it's just being human to everybody that you meet no matter what the race that in your own life you have a, you have your path you have the people that come into your path and your job even uh, it might sound like, you know, um, uh, tunnel vision oh, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Focus on the things in front of you. Yeah. Focus on the people in front of you, the people that actually are affected by your life, you bump into, you shake hands with, and, and, and the people that see you. Maybe now, obviously, you've got YouTube and you've got things that you, like you can reach a larger number of people. But I think the main thing is if everybody just focused on trying to be a better person to the people you actually connect with yeah. in life yeah. that already 
I think could make a greater impact. We all think so, we are trying to think so big about the world and, and the whole racism and the whole this thing. We are thinking very, very big and we don't see okay. that when somebody comes out, we, we are being prejudiced or we are being yeah. judgmental yeah. To, the, to our neighbor or yes. to, to you know, the guy who washes your windscreen at the yeah. traffic light yeah. or whatever. But these are the interactions, the actual day-to-day -day interactions that in, in unconscious ways can, can, can affect how one race sees the other. The way you open your mouth to talk to somebody yeah. is, is the most simple thing. And I think people should be reminded that, yes, it's, it's actually the things that you can affect, which is your own life and the people who are in your life. That's the way you can educate. That's the best way you can educate. And just, just be, be good, be, be nice, be, yeah. be, be, be open to conversation. Don't, you know, if you are rude to everybody and you don't, you don't even connect to the person because, oh, that's a different color. That's a different person. I don't know that person. You are never going to get to, to engage and to even open conversation or, or to make any kind of impact. And I think, yeah, we need to narrow, narrow the vision a little bit so that people actually see that, yeah, it's the day-to-day -day life and the people that you meet that you need to affect first, and then you can change the world, but you need to change, start small. Yeah, so I, I was speaking with my dad, um, I have this uh, conversation I'll be releasing about parenting, right? And, and the mis generational barriers, right? Mistakes or just even um, decisions made by um, our parents and how those decisions come to affect us as, as adults now. And yeah. the, the conscious decisions that some of us are making to make sure that, okay, how do we, how do we positively progress the next generation? I'm not a parent yet. I hope to be mm -hmm. one day. Um, but you're a parent. And uh, the few times I've, I've observed you uh, in, in Ghana, you kind of like, um, I don't know, this just from observation, it kind of like just teach by practice, like just watch me and, and, and that kind of free flowing parenting, which I feel like even puts more pressure on the parent. So it means that you have to be the parent you, 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 you desire to be. So like how did you, did that just happen based on, okay, when you became a mom and, and you just had to, uh, you just have to do it. Or were you taught for like the type of parent I would be when I become? Um, wow, I think it's a bit of a mix of both. Obviously, like my parents were wonderful. My, they yeah. are still wonderful. My dad unfortunately died, but he, yeah. like they, they, I think they gave us a wonderful childhood, especially for being mixed race. They made sure that we had a balance of both lives and that we understood both cultures that we were coming from and we got opportunity to imbibe ourselves into 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 both worlds wholeheartedly and freely and acceptingly and that is one thing that i consciously want to teach my children that's why for me it's like it's compulsory to take my my, my son hasn't been yet obviously yeah but uh, my daughter since since she was born every year we go to ghana is the most natural thing in the world yeah. you are here because you are ghanaian you yeah. are here because this is where your family is yeah. and yes this is omon this is vili this is reggie these are your friends yeah. because they're my friends and it's the most natural thing in the world and it works yeah, yeah. she's free she's yeah. at home Right now is quarantine. She's like, when are we going to Ghana? Why can't we go to Ghana? What's going on? Why are we here? Why aren't we there? Me, when I grow old, I want to be in Ghana. And that's mission accomplished for me yeah. on that front yeah. with her. Yeah. Because I want her to be, to be free in the world like this. So that is a conscious effort. And obviously speaking English with her here in Hungary so that she has the option to be able to travel and be at home in Ghana, especially, but anywhere in the world that she chooses later on in her life. So that was a conscious, very conscious um, decision. decision. And, and obviously one that requires a lot of planning and a lot of like, you know, finances and all those things, yeah. because you have to yeah. make it happen. If I yeah. don't take care, she will not know. It will not be natural. You know what I mean? So yeah. that one takes a lot of planning and, and conscious thought on 
both the part of my husband and myself. It's something that we discussed and something that we, we make sure is, um, is something that we can provide. And, but at the same time, you have the, like, I, I didn't come with the, with the guidelines for how to be a parent. Obviously, I've looked around my growing up and, and other families, my friends, and who does what, in what way. Um, but the rest is really, we are active people with my husband. We, we travel a lot. We move around a lot. We have a huge um, um, community. Friend, friend, yeah, community of, of friends, mostly creatives, but all, you know, the f full spectrum. My husband's family is really big with a lot of like, you know, doctors and, and very, you know, intellectual kind of people. So it's a, it's a mix. We, we go, we visit a lot with family. We travel a lot. And uh, like I can mostly with my daughter, obviously, we take care with us whenever we can. Yeah. And, and what she sees is, yeah, this is us. This is how we are. Sit down, listen to the conversation. If you are bored, okay, go and find somebody to play okay. with. Or, okay. you know, but this, we are free over here. So you two just try to adapt yourself to our world. Because, I mean, we, a lot of people, I think, try to make life as comfortable for the child and try to focus on the child's world and this, 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 but you, they are in your world they yeah. have to make sure they are they are adaptable to that as well you know yeah. and that one dear yeah, there's no rule book for it in my in my view there i obviously i'm sure we make a lot of mistakes they probably uh, you know see things or hear things that they are not trained for or or ready for or or whatnot because it's an adult world but I think also is the best preparation for life. I remember my mom used to carry me to all her meetings and lunches and, and exhibitions and whatnot. And me too, I, 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 used to, I used to love being around the adults, just listening to them talk. Probably, probably also influences who I am today. Yeah. And, uh, and so for that one, she just comes and, and she has to be a part of what we live. And and that one there is a is a no notebook attached <laughs> version. Come what me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um music that you're making now after being a mother for the second time, is it changing? Are you are you are you seeing yourself change pattern? To be very honest with you. I have not really made music since I've, uh, I've had my son. Um, I feel like, okay, well, towards just after he was born, we finished an album with Iri Mafia that we had started in the summer while I was still pregnant. But, uh, uh, okay, I'm coming. Okay. Baby issues. Yeah. Um, but um, for the last, I don't know, seven months or so, I have been almost unable to write anything. I'm not in the mood. I don't, I'm not in the frame of mind. I don't even know what to say. I'm kind of like in a base mode. I've just gone quiet. I'm focusing on the family. Obviously, the quarantine also came at the time, homeschooling, uh, keeping the house, watching a baby. It doesn't really leave time for me to sit down and start, you know, writing for hours and whatnot. And I actually don't even feel like it. I feel like I'm now recharging my batteries a bit, gathering my thoughts and, and watching what is going on with, yeah. my, with myself, with my family and in the world in general. And then, and then uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll start whenever the inspiration hits. For now, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm uninspired, but I'm not, yeah. I'm not in creative mood in that, in that way. So one last question, so that you can go and take your uh, baby. Yeah, Sorry. Feeding issues. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've seen that. I will round up. Um, <laughs> love and duty. Love and duty. Um, for you, which one would you go with? Love. Love. Love is duty. Love, love contains everything. Is love? Yeah, love is all. It's everything inside. Yeah. Duty included. Yeah. It's not separate, I think. Oh, okay. It has to be inside. If you choose to love, it om yeah, it's part of your duty then. It's part, yeah, uh, love. Yeah. All the inside. All right. Thank you very <laughs> much. Um, I hope, say, you enjoyed this conversation because I enjoyed everything. Yeah, today. very much. Very um, much. I'd like to do another one when, when the course is very, very clear. 
but really, really yeah. enjoyed everything. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, Charlie Movim, yeah. and I'm looking forward to hearing other interviews and other yeah. things going on. Right now, we all have to gather our information and keep our yeah. eyes open. And then, and then try to be, I suppose, the best ambassadors for whatever mission that we, we feel because the world needs it, Charlie. It looks like, uh, yeah, there's so much negativity, there's so much pain, Charlie. We yeah. feel, yeah. but look sharp and do yeah. on our own level what we can. Yes, definitely. So thank you yeah. very, very much. Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <Please. laughs>